Okay, so we've spent all of this time and all of these weeks and months um, getting to this point where we have a fully functional app and it's out on a real app store. And at the moment we're focused on the Android uh, space. So um, all the while I've been saying about um, um, that what we're creating here is is, is cross-platform. Our, our code, our, our underlying code of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is cross-platform. We've been focused this whole time on, on Android. But if you recall, uh, with, with Taco or Cordova slash PhoneGap, we always have the ability um, to remind you here, Taco platform, uh, this, this was a command early on in that what we did was we you know, we, we can uh, add the different platforms, and we were working with the Android platform and the browser platform. But in theory, then, we have the ability to create, with the same code that we have, the Windows version, a Windows Phone version, uh, BlackBerry version, Firefox, Amazon. So remember, when we were uploading it to Amazon App Store, there was a screen that it said, you have compatibility with these 200 Android devices and these five Amazon devices. Well, if you wanted the full compatibility of the Amazon devices to our project, we could do taco, platform, add. We're not actually doing this. I'm just thinking, talking theoretically. Uh, and here, Fire OS, we would add the Fire OS, the Amazon Kindle operating system to the project. And then we'd have to read up uh, the documentation about, okay, we've got this platform. How do we actually work it? We've been focusing this whole sequence uh, with Android. Uh, so if we want to then set ourselves up to target the different operating systems, we would have to go read the documentation. And remember that documentation is over at um, phone uh, at uh, cordova.apache.org. So if I decided to that I do want to target more of the and uh, more of the Amazon devices, I would add the platform, like I'm showing there. Taco platform add Amazon dash Fire OS. That's one of the possibilities. I've got their available platforms, and then I would say, great, I've got the the means. Now, how what do I do with it? So I'd go over to the documentation at, of the Cordova site and go look up the. Um, <coughs> The, the Amazon uh, you know documentation or the Windows documentation or the OS 10 documentation because I can also create my project to target it to iPhones, iPads, iPod touches and OS 10. It can be a full featured Mac app. The problem of course that is if you see right here that is not one of the available platforms. That's what holds us back to take the step to then create the um, iPhone version. We, do, we are on Windows. We have to have a Mac uh, to be able to do this, to do Taco Platform Add iOS. Um, so here is this tool that I'm going to show you that this will get you close to this. Let's say you don't have a Mac. Let's say you can't invest in a Mac or you can't you know, borrow one and such. Um, Let's, uh, let's do this. Go ahead and open, open your web browser. And let's go to phonegap.com. Now I've been saying that uh, Taco is synonymous with Cordova is synonymous with PhoneGap. This project that we're using, Taco, has a long history uh, in that it originally was created deep down several years ago by a company named Nitobi or Nitobi. Uh, and then they got bought. They were trying to crack that nut about how do I write code to go to all the mobile devices back in 2011 or so. They were doing really well and then Adobe uh, saw what they were doing and they bought them. So then they got their code and they continued to improve upon it and so they, they bought that and they named it PhoneGap, Adobe PhoneGap. So then at a certain point uh, Adobe then forked or gave a version of PhoneGap over to uh, the Apache Foundation. Uh, and the Apache Foundation is, is a big, famous, influential organization of open source. 
So Adobe gave a version of that from Gap code to Cordova, and now Cordova has a branch of it, uh, where, which is what we've been using, and then our version, our flavor of it is Taco. It's a long story. But the short of it is, Adobe's version of PhoneGap is what we're going to look at for a bit today, because everything that we've learned in Taco will still apply with Adobe's version. We can still use a command prompt, and if we install PhoneGap, we can do PhoneGap um, platform, or you know, PhoneGap create my project. This is just in theory. Uh, and then when I've got that, I can do PhoneGap platform add iOS, whatever. It's just swapping out one command in the command prompt. But this won't work for us because we don't have the software installed. But if we had Adobe's version of this, uh, we could do the same thing. So, well, if it's the same thing, what's the difference? The big difference is that PhoneGap, uh, that be because PhoneGap comes from Adobe, a big, big, big software company, their version of it also has their proprietary build, Adobe Build, which is what we're going to explore here. And the short answer of well, what's Build is we can create an account, we upload our code to Adobe Build, and they will build it for us for all the platforms, including iOS. So let's explore that a little bit. So they're talking about how it's amazing, find out more, get the, the guides and all of that. Examples. There is there is that synergy to some degree. They keep some stuff themselves, but they do send some of it back to the main Cordova branch, which we get also. Um, so if we look at PhoneGap.com, uh, it's just telling you, you know, all of the stuff that we're seeing here basically is what we've got already with Taco to various degrees. Their big one is phone get build, which we'll look at in a moment. And uh, they just go on to say these are companies that have created their own app based on uh, Adobe uh, build. But if we, uh, at the very top of the page, if we click on products, so uh, Scrolling down through all of that, it says, okay, PhoneGap versus Apache, Cordova. What's the difference? People always ask, what's the difference between PhoneGap and Cordova? And they tell their story there about 2011 and so forth. Um, so it's just saying this is our version and it's their version. And they've got a desktop app. And I wanted to try to download it before the class started, but uh, we're going to explore this just a little bit, a little bit later. So what I want to do is if you scroll down here and download the Windows version, we'll use it and we'll launch it a little bit later. But I just want that to download in the background. It's for about 46 megabytes. It shouldn't take too long to download, but I'm going to let that download in the background. Uh, the way it works with Adobe's version is that you, you can download the software. Now, notice it's in version 0.3.1 beta, and it says you need at least Windows 8.1. So this is very new. The command prompt version, that's been around a while. It works exactly the same as what we've been doing. We would do phone gap, build Android in the command prompt. But now they've got this beta version of a nice graphical user interface. I haven't explored it very much because there's so many ways to do this, of course. But I'm going to let that download in the background. And it goes on to say that, of course, you'll be able to test your apps. And the interesting way that you can test your app on this this graphical user interface method is that you get that software then you download the, the developer mobile app for your device and you sort of synchronize your device with the desktop app and then it shows your app on the device well again that sounds like a variation of what we've been doing with taco just a different way this might be a way to do it if that command prompt uh, is problematic and such, this might be another way to do things. So that would be the app that you get on your device. Uh, what kind of license do what we're supposed to be downloading? What's that? What are we supposed to be downloading? Um, oh, the desktop. The desktop app version. Yeah. So I'm going to let that download. I guess it downloaded pretty fast. Again, let's look at that app 
a little bit later because that would be like starting from zero if I was teaching this, cra this class brand new that would be the starting point whereas uh, in this class we use node to install taco and then we're, we get started here we would download this software install it and start to use it we'll look at it later because what I want to look at is we've already got an app we've already got it all programmed that's all ready to go we've tested it on a device we want to now start to think about migrating it over to a different environment a different OS that's what I want to look at here if you go back to the home page uh, and we want to go over to uh, package your app in the cloud. PhoneGap build takes the pain out of compiling PhoneGap apps. Get app store ready apps without the headache of maintaining native SDKs. Our PhoneGap build service does the work for you by compiling in the cloud. So every time we're doing Taco build Android, uh, that's what they offer in the cloud. And since we cannot do Taco build iOS, this could be an alternative for that. And we're going to check this out. We're going to create an account. Uh, so this does require an account and all of that. And I'll just, I'm just going to make it up like we've been doing for everything else. If you already have an Adobe ID, then you can log in with it. How many of you have a subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud? Right, if you've got the Adobe Creative Cloud, uh, you've got a leg up on us. Because if we look at build. we look at this website, which is build.phonegap.com, uh, I'm saying how this is very cool, very useful. The catch is that it is mostly not free. Now, if you've got the Creative Cloud account, then it's free. But if I scroll down here, eventually, what is this? This is all amazing, but what does it cost? The free plan... Uh, let's you have one private app with a 50 megabyte size using all the Cordova plugins that we're used to, third party apps. Yes, you cannot upload your own plugins. Um, there is a difference between those two. So, no, not for the free one, but for ours, it wouldn't be a problem since we're already doing the repository method. Don't worry what that means. Collaborators, and it's free. If you go up to the, play, the paid plan or the Adobe Cloud Membership plan, you can have 25 private apps, 100 megabytes per app, or 1 gigabyte plus the rest. So it can be $9.99 a month if you go for the paid one. So $10 a month to have the Adobe Build Service, which is to be able to compile your app into all the platforms, even if you don't have all the tools. In theory, all you need is Notepad++. You don't need to download Taco, you don't need Visual Studio, you, need, you, don't need all of, you don't need the Android SDK, all of that stuff. In theory, you just need Notepad++. Write your code in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then upload it to these guys, and they'll compile it to all the platforms. Obviously, that sounds way too good to be true, and it is to some degree, as we'll see here. So, uh, in the build homepage here, let's click get started. Or I guess uh, completely free. Oh, um, up here where it says open source apps unlimited, all of them are unlimited. What this means is if I've got um, this app that we've built in the class, and we create this account, and we and we upload that app, we have we've used one private app. Then you finish with this class, you want to build your own app for your own project, you have no more private apps to, to use on your account. It would have to be an open source app. It would, it would need to be an app that's out on GitHub where everyone can see it, where everyone can see your code. Remember, GitHub is that code sharing site. So if I've got my code up on GitHub, and this is like the company's app with, that taps into the user accounts and and all of that stuff. I wouldn't want my private company uh, apps code on a public GitHub repository. So the open source aspect of it, be very careful about that because then all of your, you know, your proprietary code that you might not want to be public would be public. What's the other option? The private one right here. If you upgrade to the paid ones, then you can do twenty five of. Is that per month? Yes. It's ten bucks per month, but it's one for the whole account. 
So you buy, you, you get the free account and you have one private account. That, I mean, one private app. That's it. Now, you could kind of fake it by deleting your current app that they've already compiled and then create a new app and then you've got the new app, but you have to delete and re-upload the app every time. Very cumbersome. Question? Yeah, uh, were you going to ask about that or were you going to say that? Yes, yes, so exactly. Uh, we'll see that, okay, we're going to upload this version of our testing app, it works great, let's delete it, and then upload our real app. You can do that, but it's going to be very cumbersome because you'll have to keep doing it over and over. So if you have the cloud membership, um, you're already paying the $49 a month or whatever you're paying, $50, $60, whatever it is, and you have access that way. So why pay $9.99? Is that student version? No, um, no, it's, it's generally that way for everybody. You can just jump in on the $9.99. Yeah, if you if you if you want like a couple of specific apps in cloud, then it's that price. If you want the full suite, like I need Photoshop and I need Flash and I need Lightwave and I need everything, then that's up to the forty nine or so. Yeah, well, I wonder, what I'm wondering is that because I have the Creative Cloud, is that this for what they say here, the Creative Cloud membership, if that's the same as what I have? Probably we we can try to log in with that with those credentials and see what we get. I pay 30 a month as a student. Yeah, student, uh, they, they do uh, chop down the price a little bit for students. Technically, though, and I'm obviously not going to turn you in, if you do any non-student work, you need a non-student account. But again, I'm not... I'm not I talked to them one time. Well, this was back in the old days when we had software, and I kept buying the student version. Mm -hmm. And I'd buy more than one student version because I had more than one computer. And I asked the rep, and he said, you know, our upgrades are about the same price as the new ones, so we don't care. Mm -hmm. I'm that for you. Yes. So what we'll do here is we'll click the sign in or sign up. Okay, I'm going to go through this as the sign up way. I'm going to assume I don't have an Adobe account. And like we've done for Amazon and everything else, we will create a fake account if you'd like, or a real account. And uh, I we can create a fake account and get started right away on this. So I'm going to click sign up on the top here. Uh, which one do I want? I want the free one. And so it's going to ask you to either sign in with your existing account. Um, I don't have one, so I'll go in here. Not a member, then select uh, Get Adobe ID. What you want to do then is um, you want to create an account here. And again, you can completely make it up. in some sort of password. I'd be curious to see over your shoulder in a moment what it looks like because um, it, it, it'll definitely let you log in but then we'll see what sort of uh, how many apps you get. Probably the 25. I'm creating this account and uh, choose your locality and if this is your real email address do you want to stay informed about Adobe product services? Yes or no? Doesn't matter. I'm going to turn mine off. There's an agreement here, of course, that uh, everyone agrees to when no one reads. So you can read it if you'd like. Uh, just like we did with Amazon. Click Sign Up. And we're in. You don't really have to uh, verify anything uh, in our case, but at some point I might want to. Apparently they're having Phone Gap Day in Amsterdam in May 2016, so you can go partake in some good programming. What's that? Well, I'm sure it's more like a meetup. I'm sure it's more like a tech meetup where everyone gets together and talks about why PhoneGap is so great. I'm curious. It's probably like $2,000 or 2,000 euros. 150 dollars. 150 euros. Not so bad, but it's sold out.
so maybe next year. So a lot of luminaries are there, lots of workshops, right in the middle of Amsterdam. <coughs> so sponsors. All right, so we've got this account, the way this works. Um, it's simply, this is a relatively simple account here. It's just what the point of it is to compile your app, basically. There's not too much here to worry about. I'll mention a few things as we get to it. So I've got this tab of your apps at the top. I can always get back to my apps. Uh, I can go read the documentation and find plugins. You know, I need uh, this plugin about push notifications or w whatever that is. So I can go look up plugins, read documentation. That'll just take me to PhoneGap.com, which is basically synonymous with uh, Cordova, although it's a, it's Adobe's version, so it's slightly different here and there, and it might be good to get more information. Whatever you learn here also applies to what you learn in Taco or what you do in Taco. You look at the blog, the FAQ, and support. Um, so anyway, on apps, open source and private. We'll look at the private one first. So um, under private, uh, you can get it out of GitHub. We'll talk about that later. Or we've got upload zip. So we need to prep this a little bit here. What are we going to upload? Let's go to your flash drive where you've got your app. And what build needs is basically only your uh, your WW folder. Your WW folder. So um, uh, with your config XML file. So what I'm going to do is my whole app basically is the WW folder. I'm going to copy my WW folder to the desktop copy it to the desktop, and then I also need my config XML file in the WW folder. It's still, for the best results, build still needs a config XML file, because that's what lists our package ID, of course, our version code, all of our specific Android stuff, our iPhone stuff. So we can upload our project without that and it'll take it uh, but then you'll have to fill in uh, uh, several more boxes and such inside the interface here and it'll even suggest to you this works best if you upload a config XML file so I'm gonna copy my config XML file right into the WW folder So on my desktop I've got the WW folder which was, I've done nothing else to it except to put in the config file And it wants, build wants a zip file. Do you have uh, to change the path to the config file? No. Uh, as I've used it, there doesn't seem to be any problem at all with just dragging and dropping. Um, because these paths that are listed here, they still work. All right, so I need to zip this folder. And the way we do it in Windows is you, you have your WW folder, right click it. Send to compressed zipped folder. Build wants it all compressed into one archive. So go ahead and do that. Should do it pretty quickly. The name of this doesn't really matter. But make sure you compress this all into a zip file. Did everyone get their zip file? Go back to the website. Okay, I've got something to upload, so click upload a zip. Select to upload it. And then it should recognize because of your config XML file. It recognize the app's <coughs> name, the description, there's my version code, my owner, you know, all of that stuff. Out of, out of the config file. 
uh, it shows I have all of this. Um, and then there's an app ID. That's just unique to your <coughs> account here in, in, in Build. That doesn't really apply to anything regarding your um, app stores and such. Uh, so the app, then it says it was built. It was built one mil, uh, one minute ago. So I've got one app that I've uploaded. Uh, I can add new apps, but again, since I've got the free one, that's the only private app I can add. Every other app that I would want to add here would be open source, in that everyone would see my code if they if they search for it. I'm going to select ready to build. Now what it's going to do here on Adobe servers is it's going to take all of my assets that I've uploaded and it's going to run their commands, basically taco or phone gap build release Windows, phone gap build release Android, phone gap build release iOS. And now it's done. My Android and my Windows versions are done. Blue is good. Red is not. So we'll see what happened there. And this is, this is our private app. We've got a QR code here. This is pretty useful because you can use your QR code reader on your device to scan that and it'll install it right on your device. Um, so we're using Adobe's infrastructure, the Adobe Cloud, and all of that to get it over to the device. Right, we would have been we would have done taco run device. Uh, so here, in theory, then uh, if I've got an iPhone, I could get a, a QR code reader app, and then scan that code and get the app. In theory, because something didn't quite happen right here. Um, if you first click on uh, oh, don't click on that. Uh, where do they show it? If you click, okay. If you click on the name of your app here, that is an active link. If you click on the name of your app, it tells you details. Uh, you know what plugins you used in the apps and all of that. But under the build section here, uh, the Windows version is done. You can download the XAP file, the ZAP file, for Windows Phone. So you could, if you've got a Windows Phone, you can install that file. So on Windows, it's ZAP files. And then uh, you can download the APK. So that APK that gets created via the toggle command prompt, here it is. We can download it there. But then the iPhone version has a big old error. Basically, you must provide a signing key first. This still, you're not going to get away from the $99 developer's fee for the iPhone. You still need uh, to pay Apple developer fee for that certificate. Your signing key, these have different names. Developer certificate, signing key, key store, JKS file, you know, all of that is synonymous with you being an official developer. And we can see that the Windows and Android versions let you go pretty much all the way and you get these debug versions and you know that's well we already did a variation of this already so that's not super special what I like is that you have the QR code version here you can just scan it and get the app directly um, if you had this as a public app you can send people I believe you can send people a link to that so that people can test it privately. That would be one way to share this app to other people, perhaps a faster way to have them install your app than, than telling them, do this, get it from this website, turn off your permissions, and all of that. So it sounds like Apple wants their buck, mm -hmm. um, whether you put it on their store or not. Yes. If you're a private company, you want to have it in private company. Yeah. I believe there are variations in that case if you're doing, you know, intranet apps. Uh, I'm not too familiar with that aspect of it. More, more of, I'm more of like the public apps consumption aspect of it. But yes, that's the big barrier to entry. 
uh, to, to do your iPhone apps and uh, your iPad apps and such. You definitely need, you know, very early on to get that developer's account. Whereas for us, we held off all the way to the last week of the, you know, the last weeks of this three-month class where we went off to Amazon to get ourselves a developer account. And if you did want the, uh, the official Google developer's account, it's $28, one-time fee. And then for iPhone, it's completely opposite. Very early on, you need a developer's account because if you're going to test your I iPhone apps even on privately as you're working on it, you still need the developer account to approve your device for development. $99 a year. But studies show that people make more money off of iPhone apps. People make more money off of that iPhone app version uh, than, the, than the Android version. The exact same app, people make more money off of the iPhone version. Because people on iPhone are a little bit more accustomed to 99 cent app, uh, 99 cent song, 599 album, they're a little more uh, accustomed to buying. And even the, even the, the devices themselves, you know, uh, the MacBooks and iMacs and such, they already are a little more expensive than, than a Windows machine, so um, it correlates that you're going to make a little more money off of the iPhone. Uh, but it's, it's still very cool that we can really get in there pretty quickly on the Android. So if, um, if I click find out how to fix this, it's basically going to give me a tutorial about it's going to give me a new tutorial um, about what you need to do. users, Windows users, convert an Apple developer certificate to a P12 file on Windows. So you, you need to go off and get uh, get your developer's account on developer.apple.com then after the check clears and all of that you get a developer's certificate, a special file, you then have to convert that file over to a Windows readable version of it, all the process is right there, you have to develop, you have to register your device. Us, we went to the developer settings of the Android and we're a developer. On the iPhone, you have to register with Apple that this device is going to be used for a developer. You're done with that, you get your provisioning file. Once all of that is all set up, then in build, we provide build, we provide Adobe these credentials, and then we do the rebuild, and then it's done. And then we would get the QR code ready for that, and we would get it downloadable and everything. And then, Mr. Rajiv, you were trying to, to do the, the scan there. What happened when you did that? Well, it would be pretty cool. Um, I scanned it with my iPhone, up popped a web page offering uh, to install the apps. There were uh, only three listed, which were the ones that passed the build. So that made sense. So the iOS one didn't didn't it load didn't it. show up as a link. Mm. Yeah, I, I was uh, pretty impressed where you could just hit a button and it would install. Yeah, so if you go through that process, if we were to go to the process of setting up the signing key, then you would have the link for the iOS version, tap it, and you've got your app. So then you'd be able to share that QR code with friends and family, and they'd be able to get your app for testing purposes, because this is still like, this is not the official app store, this is just the testing environment. Yes? So, uh, what app do you recommend for Android? That's one QR code scan. There's one that I like simply called Scan, but you can get it from scan.me. Um, search, uh, search the Android app store. Uh, it's got this logo, right? This, you know, red target kind of thing. Uh, that's the one I like for for Android. It's on Android, it's on iPhone, it's on Windows Phone. It's on all of them, basically, but I like that one. And uh, it scans... What's that? It's a QR code reader. It's a QR code or a barcode reader. So I like this as, as that. Uh, you can make QR codes here, too. I talk about this in other classes that need it, but I can make QR codes here. You can uh, create a free account, and you'll be able to make these QR codes like, let's say you've got a restaurant, 
and you want people to quickly give you a review on Yelp or to check in on Foursquare or to like you on Facebook, you can make a QR code at ScanMe uh, and um, you know, like us on Facebook and I put the link. And so that uh, that's a real QR code. I would print it out, put it on the put it by the cash register when I sell something. I say, don't forget to like us on Yelp. I say, well, how do I do that? Just scan the QR code. Well, how do I do that? Get out. So um, this is um, this is still hoops that we need to jump through, but it's very close, isn't it? Um, the the builds that we've done here are still basically the the debug versions. Um, no key selected, no publisher ID, no key selected. So there is the documentation for each of these. What you fully, what you further need to do. Let's say okay. Uh, let's say we did want to try this with without the. Um, the the exact way that we did it. That I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want to use the command prompt and taco and all of that. I want to use a nice interface. So uh, let's see what the next step would be if we want to complete this, uh, the Android version, for final consumption. Uh, it's, uh, it needs your JKS file. So the way that I would do it is, I think you can do it from that link there, but the way I'll do it is on the top right corner, all the way at the top, you're going to have the uh, your your account icon, if you click there, you can go to edit account. And so here you can link, uh, this is the spot where you can link if you're, if you're using the public apps, you could link your, your GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab accounts. And if you've got your code saved on these accounts, when we then go to build to add a brand new app in the open source, it would pull it out of that account where I can build another app. But remember that the default of these is that your code is public. Uh, so I want to go over here to the signing keys. And there's a big, big warning here. Back up your signing keys. They cannot be retrieved from phone get build after uploading under any circumstances. So the JKS file, basically. It's saying, we have a copy of it, but we can't give it back to you. You better have your own copy saved somewhere. So then it says, okay, upload your iOS key or Android or Windows keys. We've got one for Android. We've got the JKS file. Uh, the one quirk that I noticed is that it wants uh, it wants the um, JKS file. Uh, I'm going to copy it to my desktop with a slightly different name. It wants it as whatever dot key store, not JKS. Build wants your JKS file as dot key store. You just have to rename it, and then Windows will complain that you're renaming it. Just go ahead and confirm that, and you'll have something.keystore. So for my Android, I'm going to add that key. Uh, this title uh, doesn't matter, but the alias does. That's the alias inside of the key store. Remember, when we created this stuff, so I'm just going to keep it simple. Mine is all like this. When we created the JKS file, remember I said put your last name on it. So I'm just using the same name that I had here for, for everything. Title of this key store is my last name, and then the, um, the alias in the key store is that last name, and then I'm going to select 
the key store file. Submit. You can have multiple ones. That's why it asks you for a title. You can have more than one JKS, one more than one key store. So what's its name going to be here in your list of key store files? I'm keeping the same last name, so it says Smith. It took my file. Again, I cannot retrieve it in any way, so make sure you have a copy of it elsewhere. You can delete the key store. And Adobe, what are you doing? Why are your icons not aligned properly? <laughs> How can you not trust someone that doesn't keep track of every pixel? Exactly. If they can't keep track of every pixel, how can they keep track of my security? But I noticed that because I have a degree in graphic design. Uh, okay, it has my file, it has my key store. Notice it says it's locked because I haven't provided my password to access this when I actually build it for real publication. So I can click the lock. What's the password for the JKS file and what's the password for the alias? Notice slightly different slightly different terminology. Uh, we we know key store password and we know alias password. Here they're calling it certificate password. Same sort of concept. It's remember that our JKS file has two passwords to access the JKS file and to access the alias. And when we created it, I had said, hopefully, perhaps use the same one, just so that you don't have to remember two different passwords. The key will be unlocked for one hour. So it'll lock itself again. And what was my password again? It looks like this is not smart enough to know at this moment that I put the wrong password. I put in some gibberish and it unlocked it. When I do the build, that's when it will then check, is this password valid? So for some reason, I don't know that I typed in the wrong password until I actually build again. Looks like you're aligned now. What's that? Looks like you're aligned now. Now they're aligned after I unlock? Huh. Mm -hmm. Looks like it. Yeah. Confirm that. <laughs> That's funny. When it's unlocked, it's unaligned, huh? Well, now I'll say they did it on purpose. <laughs> All right, so. I'm going to submit that. Well, that's remember when we were doing Taco Build Android Release, and we were telling Taco, let's create the final version of our APK with our password. Here, we've given our JKS file to Adobe so that they can use it to build our app, but they need our password. So, somewhere around there, yes. <laughs> So if I go back to my apps and I go and I select again rebuild all, depending how busy their servers are, that should go quickly or not. And if I put in my wrong password, I'll get red. If I get the right password, it should go blue. Okay. And so if I click back the app to look at it in detail, oh, I forgot to do this. Um, I, did submit the, I did submit the key, I put my password. Uh, we didn't need to do that build, sorry. We needed to tell it, use this key. I haven't selected the key yet, so of course it worked. Uh, so you need to go specifically in, don't, don't click the build button, just click on, Click on the name of your app to go back to the details. 
And then here, tell it, okay, use this key. This key store file with the password that I've submitted, which is unlocked for an hour. And if it is the right password, then it should take it and process it. Right, so that seemed to have worked. It used my JKS file. It used my JKS file, and I didn't get any error. You can read the log if you want, although if it worked, I wouldn't really look at it, but if it didn't work, I would look at the log. It's just going to be pretty much output that might not be that useful. Once you get back to the app, and then update code, is that what you do? Once you get back to the... Uh, you want to click on the name of the app, and then you want to select, on the Android, you want to select your, your key there, and then it'll start to build it. Cool. So now this is the... If I choose to click on that, that's the fully processed version. And I just noticed something interesting here. Uh, two things. One is that the size, Adobe's size, is only 834K. And the one that we've done, the last one that I did was 1095K. So a little, slightly larger. They might have maybe compressed it better than, than we did. And that might not be a big deal with a few K here, a few kilobytes here and there. But if it's a big app, maybe their algorithm is more efficient. The second thing that I noticed is they seem to be running off of the Adobe, uh, the Amazon cloud, actually. So they're over on Amazon, Amazon cloud. So everyone's using that Dropbox. If you use Dropbox, Dropbox is running off of an, off, off the Amazon servers. Uh, and from what I read, they just moved on to their own private servers. But a lot of companies use the Amazon servers. Um, so this would give me the APK file. No, I notice it's they named it with a with that name there. The dot at the beginning. But that would be the APK file. I would still need to use my ability to then transfer it onto the device or the QR code here. Um, but that APK file now, I could take that over to Amazon App Store, uh, Google Play App Store. And if I go through the process of creating the iOS version, it would give me, a, it would give me an IPA file. The, the Apple format of the app. It would give me the IPA file, which then I can upload to the uh, Apple App Store. Yes? There's an install button under the QR code. This is going to say, here's your APK file or your ZAP file. And if the iOS version worked, it would say, here's your IPA file. So this is just another way to, I can download them this way, or I can get them all in this one screen here. And then the QR code is the QR code is probably a screen that looks like this. So far, pretty impressive. Yeah. For even for what we've got here, this limitation, it's still it's still very cool. This assumes you've got an app. Uh, so you've got all it needed was the WW folder. All it needed is a plain old HTML CSS JavaScript project. We put in the XML file so that it can take all of our our stuff here, but if we uploaded a project without the XML, we'd have boxes to fill in, just like we had items to fill into our see our XML file. Hopefully, the desktop app has some kind of an emulator where you can render your code. You could you know, write the code and test it. We're going to check that out very soon to see what it has, and I've also got other examples of other emulators and other ways to do this also. Um, what else can we look at? Uh, so, collaborate. 
collaborators, add a collaborator, tester developer, rewrite access. So we can add other people here under collaborators where other people can upload a version of the code as you work on it or people just to be able to read the code. Settings of this device. Delete this app. This is the this is the way to kind of get around the one app limitation. Uh, I work on this app. I have it compiled and such. Then I delete it and create a new app and upload my other app. And I just have to keep swapping them out that way. So this will follow him with the twenty five apps means you can only have twenty five on their server at one time. Yeah. Okay, here's the part about public sharing. So if I have that active, that's how then I can... <coughs> so I've got this now here. Share it. Share that QR code. That address up here I can send to people. So now that unique address I can send to friends and family via email, and then they can go through the process of installing the app privately for testing purposes and such. So that's under the settings. You've got a few settings there. I'm not sure what hydration is. I have to look at that. I have to look that up. And then, of course, debugging. Um, so that you can debug it in the monitor uh, and all of that. I can swap out my code, upload a new version of the code right here. Just upload the new zip file. All right, so pretty straightforward. And uh, the main purpose of this is to is to, uh, to build your code. Let's say you did want to do it this way of open source. Um, if you... Let's, let's take it like this. If you'd like to do this, um, we'll go back to the apps, uh, back to the apps screen and select new app. I'm not going to be able to do a private app anymore. I'm out of space for it, but the open source one. The way this works is we only allow open source apps to be built from public GitHub repos. What that means is that you've created an account at GitHub, you've uploaded your code there, and it's public for everyone to see. So I've got one that we can work with just to see the full process here. If you open another tab, <coughs> you go to github.com slash instructor victor I've got the previous versions of the app from the previous semester, month one, month two, month three. All of the code is there. I've mentioned this site before. I'm going to add our code there for this semester eventually. Uh, but here, this is what GitHub is. As I've said before, you upload your code here. You can have you can invite people to view your code, help you edit the code, all of that. Collaborate, and so I do have here then. Uh, version, you know, month three of the fall semester class. If you click on uh, that repo, uh, all of the code is here, the app is complete, uh, and then there's a link right here. This is the GitHub link directly to this code. So that's what Build is asking. What's the link to your GitHub address so that we can check it out and build your app? So just to go through the process, I'm going to select that, paste it here. I can branch it optional and such. Let's say pull. It's going to connect to that account. <coughs> so it saw this info. I had also called it that previously, but notice um, uh, notice it says 
2015-1107 or 17. So it is that version of the project. And so that's the other way that I could um, that I could do this, uploading either a zip file into a private space, or if I have my app or my code public like that, I can um, I can have un unlimited ones of those. And the point of this is for then um, Adobe to to compile it for me into all of the platforms. Mm -hmm. Hydration mm -hmm. is a uh, faster compilation time and also updates are pushed directly to the devices that have it. Oh, okay. So if I did end up installing it on devices and activate hydration, it should go faster and it automatically updates on the device? What's the downside? <laughs> the same. Well, that sounds pretty useful. So again, on this one that I'm pulling out from my repository, go ahead and build that, take the code and so forth. So if you do it this way, your app is public. Someone could find it in theory if they search. Well, this is an to private, this one is totally public, because we're getting our code out of a public GitHub. And it did say, if you use GitHub, you have to have a public GitHub. So even if you pay GitHub the $4 a month or whatever for private accounts, Build still wants the public uh, version. So you see those limitations. But obviously, you know, thinking outside the box, you could put your code on GitHub, just as long as you need it for this to compile it, remove it from GitHub, and then remove it from here, and then your, your app isn't public anymore. So there's always ways. And it's, I'm going to get the same result here. I need the JKS file, and then it'll fully compile it, but there, it took it from my, it took it from my um, online repository. Any questions at this point? All right, uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to use this desktop app that they have uh, that that they have provided for us. I want to launch that and have it have it install maybe before you step out for the break, just so that it's ready to go. Uh, so at 7:15, we'll take a break until 7:25. Go through that process. Just select all defaults, and then we'll see what we get with it when we come back.